In this module, we will talk about some ideas for preparing a lecture. And the questions that we will consider include, first, what are the steps that you take in preparing a lecture? Second, what makes a good lecture? And third, what are the don'ts of preparing a lecture? So first of all, what are the steps we go through in preparing a lecture? First, if you have this luxury, choose a topic that you would like to become an expert on, something that you've always wanted to know about, that you've wanted to read about. Um, once you've chosen your topic, or if the topic has been assigned to you, read as much as you can about the topic to try and get the idea of how much is known about the topic so that you can decide what areas you want to focus on. Then it's very important for you to find out ahead of time the size, the level of knowledge, and the composition of your audience. Is it going to be people who are all experts in this topic? Is it going to be a wide range of people from first-year medical students up to faculty members? Um, who are you talking to? So that's very important to know. Then you want to decide on your subtopics or your take-home points, the general categories that you want to cover, and also several points that you want the audience to be able to take away. Then you're ready to start preparing the lecture. And I find that a good way to do this, for me, is to have two files open on my computer at the same time. The first is a Word file where I put an outline of the topic and then gradually fill in details as I read things. The second is a PowerPoint file in which I start making slides. I may put up a slide with bullet points. I may draw a figure. Um, I may import an image. Things that I think need to go in the final lecture, not necessarily in order. Then by the time I'm done with this, I have a nicely outlined talk with the basic words and thoughts in it, and I have a bunch of slides which th then can be um, added to, deleted, and rearranged. Once you have your lecture um, completed, the important thing to do is to practice it and to time it, which means to either practice in front of somebody or to sit in front of your computer and to speak the lecture at the speed and in the tone that you ordinarily would give it and to practice changing the slides and to point at things. And this is a very important step because this tells you if you have too much material, which is usually the case, and also lets you know if there are maybe some gaps that need to be filled in. Once you have rehearsed your lecture and gotten it pretty much where you want it to be, the last thing you do before delivering the lecture is to read more about the topic in anticipation of questions. So it's sort of like preparing for an oral exam and anticipating what the listeners may ask you. Now the characteristics of a good lecture include that it is well organized, it's tailored to the level of the audience, and it keeps the interest of the audience often by switching gears. Here's an example. I once went to a lecture um, given by a pulmonary specialist about sleep apnea. And in the middle of the lecture, he stopped and suddenly showed a picture of this portly man and asked, who is this? And we all sat silently because it was clear that no one knew who this was. And he waited, and finally he said again, who is this? And it was clear that he wasn't going to go on until somebody at least made a guess. And so finally one person, who apparently was a little more knowledgeable, called out, that's Taft. And the speaker immediately said, that's right. This is William Howard Taft, who, when he was president, had sleep apnea so badly that he used to fall asleep in cabinet meetings and once slept through a typhoon when he was in the Philippines. And I thought, what a clever idea. Instead of simply giving us the information and saying, people who have sleep apnea don't sleep well at night, and therefore they fall asleep a lot in the daytime, he accomplished several things by showing us this slide. First of all, he switched gears and showed us a picture. He moved us from the passive to the active mode by asking, who is this? He injected a little humor, and he gave us a piece of information that we would not forget.
Now, another thing that a good lecture does is it encourages the listeners to think of questions. And they're questions that may not necessarily be asked at the time. As a lecturer, you have to be prepared to answer questions not only at the end of the lecture, but after people leave the hall, someone may come up and talk to you, or later that night or the next day, you may get an email with a really complicated question. But that's a good thing because that's what you want your lecture to inspire. Um, a good lecture also contains a few important points that can easily be recalled, points that stick out that are take-home points, and it also inspires the audience to want to read more. Now I'll end with three tips on things not to do in preparing a lecture. One is do not put every word that you're going to say on your slides because people will then read them and lose interest because you're saying nothing that they can't already read. Another point is don't try to include everything that you know about the subject. Try to keep the information to an amount and at a level that you think people can remember and hold the rest for handouts or for answering questions. And third, don't pack the material in so tightly that you have no room for interruptions or questions. You always want to leave a little room in the middle and at the end for people to ask questions. That's it for this module and the next module will talk about some practical points in delivering lectures.